Hi everyone, welcome to another uh, video. This time I'm bringing you the third part of the spring palette project that uh, I have to build a custom themed palette with some of my two paints. You've seen probably in the intro now, I selected a whole new range of greens and blues to test for the palette. And I also separated some earth tones and I think there are way too many colors that I've selected to swatch. So what I thought would be a three part video has now become a four part video. So it will be still continued in the next chapter. But for today, I have already uh, done some work here to speed up the process. I put all the names of the colors I'm going to swatch. I have greens and blues. And let's start swatching. But before I start, as usual, I'd like to thank everyone that has been following me here liking and commenting on the videos i really appreciate and if you're watching this and you still haven't subscribed please consider doing so this will really help the channel i love reading your comments and i really appreciate all the support so remember to give me that thumbs up if you like the video now let's start with the swatching shall we we have here the ones from the previous video i'm leave a card here below for the previous one but I'll also leave um, the link in the description below for part one and part two and let's start so As I had those issues with some of the tubes, it got a bit all over the place, but I'll do my best to have some decent swatching here so I can see the color as well. And we'll start now. I'm gonna use this uh, Cotman brush number eight uh, to be swatching, and I'm still using the Canson Excel paper that I used in the previous videos. So let's start with the first one, which is Serpentine Green, Genuine by Daniel Smith. It's a beautiful light green tone. I'm trying to keep these swatches a bit more uh, controlled so I have space for all of the colors. I love these tones of green. Now, the next one is um, Green Appetite Genuine, also by Daniel Smith. I think there's still a little bit of um, binder residue here. I'm 
It's a very beautiful kind of sap green tone. And this green appetite genuine when you have it diluted. So here it's too small to, to notice, but sometimes you have like a um, reddish tone coming through. So it has color separation, which is really nice. Now next one that was giving me trouble is um, green gold, which is really a color I love. So I'll need to do some um, surgery on this tube to get it out because I love this bright green. And when I think about spring, this is something that immediately comes to mind. I love how bright it is. And this is another case of names uh, being confusing because usually green gold is associated with the pigment PY129. But this is a mix and uh, the PY129 in Daniel Smith, I think is uh, called rich green gold or deep green gold. I will leave it here when I'm editing uh, the the official name but this in Maston it's chef's kiss for me at least and what else we have Helio Green by Schmincke which I probably should have put somewhere here because um, I still have other tones close to green gold but we'll deal with that this is the classic like uh, secondary green which can also be useful for mixes. I very, very rarely use this um, type of green, but maybe it's a good opportunity to experiment with. Now another Schmincke color we have here is May Green, which is a mix between PY151 and PG7, which is Stalo Green. It's another uh, bright green, but not as yellow as the green gold. It's a bit different tone, which I like because I love bright greens and I'll never get tired of having many type of bite greens. They can look similar at um, diluted though. We'll see when they dry. Then we have, but I don't know why I'm having difficulty with this word. We have Bright Green Lake by Michael Harding. This is another color that I got instantly hooked by because it's so vibrant. It's almost like fluorescent. It's made with PY180. That is also a um, yellow pigment. Um, I'm not sure if it's called golden yellow or something like that. That is used in the automobile industry, I believe. And it's a very, very bright yellow. And this green probably won't come on the video as it is in person but if you like bright vibrant colors that's it this is really really vibrant it's like a highlighter type of green so yeah it's uh, funny how they are all different even though they look from to be the same family I have a last one from this family as well that is Bright Yellow Green by Sennelier. And this is a bit lighter on mass tone. It's more similar to Bright Green Lake Diluted. And honestly, if, was, uh, if I didn't have space constraints, I would have all of these greens <laughs> because I love bright greens. I 
I hope you can see well. It's a very cloudy day uh, here today. I'm filming on a Sunday and I had to put um, a bit of uh, extra lighting to help and I hope it's not reflecting too much uh, with the wet paint but in, in any case I'll be showing you the dried swatches once I'm done. Now we have green gold, the real green gold by Marmary Blue that is PY129. They are very very close these to the Sennelier bright yellow green so I'm trying not to get them both mixed. This is a very versatile color. I love this uh, pigment. It's a yellow pigment, but uh, it's very greenish, so you can also make beautiful greens with it. And you can use it as a yellow as well. If you mix it with pink or red, you get oranges. Depending on the, to the tone of the red you use, you get more muted or more vibrant oranges and beautiful greens because it's already greenish in, in its nature so I think it's a very very versatile color. Now we have greenish yellow by Holbein. This is a mix between PY150 which is Nico Azo Yellow, PG7 Stalo Green and PBR25 which I don't remember the pigment by memory but I can always add uh, edit when I'll be editing the video and it's a very similar color to the PY129 as you can see here a bit deeper maybe but otherwise very similar Now we have Moss Green by Michael Harding. It's another very beautiful green. I have very, very few Michael Harding watercolors, but the ones that I got, I absolutely love it. This green is just gorgeous love this type of um, olive green you are getting to the bottom row here of the greens green earth which intimidates me because i remember it's very gummy color and we'll see how it behaves now i remember the first time i tried i felt it was a strange <laughs> color. I didn't understand very well about pigments at the time. I was basically just buying colors based on pigments I didn't have because I wanted to try them. I'm curious that way so <laughs> yeah when I got it I was like hmm is this supposed to be like this? It has this kind of dirty water color. <laughs> but I learned to appreciate the unique characteristics of green earth. It's an interesting pigment, all right? And I don't know, we'll see. There's so many greens, it's hard to decide. <laughs> now we have the green earth from Wizard Newton. This is a more, uh, this cooler version of green earth. It's also a mix. They have the green earth pigment mixed with um, viridian and a PB28, which is cobalt. It's a beautiful tone of green, but I don't know why I associate it more with winter, I guess. I think I always associate cooler green tone with winter and I have a few here but um, I may include one in the palette. Now I'm swatching Cobalt Green Deep by Mission Gold which is actually not a 
green uh, pigment is a blue pigment PV36 it's a very beautiful turquoise pigment Then we have Cobalt Turquoise Green by Rambra and this is, this is a green pigment, this is PG26 which is kind of unusual, I don't know if I have other paints with this pigment, PG26 It's quite similar to the PB36, kind of the same family they are both cobalts. This is a bit lighter, lighter tone, very nice tone. Then we have a Viridian by Winsor Newton, the true Viridian that popped out of my tube. Surprise! <laughs> it's a very vibrant, cooler green which i know on its own looks a bit harsh but it's a great color for mixing you can get very very beautiful grays mixing these with carmine for example i have some painting of flowers with white petals that i created a gray with very very diluted mix of viridian and carmine and it's just gorgeous because then you get color separation and you can see this is very slight shadowing between this cool green and the pink and I fi find it a really beautiful mix and now we have Viridian from Mission Gold which is actually phthalo green it's not a true Viridian You see that the tone is very similar, but don't be fooled, these paints behave in very different ways. If you need to remove true reading from the page, you I will double check, but as far as I'm concerned, you can very easily work on a viridian. It's not a staining. PG7 it is certainly very staining so once this is on the page and it's dry you will not be able to remove it or if you are it will be very very little because it's a, a phthalo pigment and other phthalo pigments um, are very staining and it also doesn't have any granulation while the true viridian will have some granulation we'll let this dry and see and last but not least of the greens we have Amazonite from Daniel Smith this is another one that uh, exploded out of the tube and it's a very very beautiful kind of turquoise pigment so these are the greens that I swatched they are very lovely I will have such a hard time choosing and while they dry I'm gonna just push things a bit out of the way here and I'm gonna swatch the blues that are in the bottom of the page I'll be back soon
Now that we have all of the blues here, I'm going to start swatching those, starting with this mod blue. That was the last one I put here. It's a very beautiful purplish uh, blue, which granulates as well. And very unique because I only seen this tone um, from handmade watercolor brands. I haven't seen any other commercial brand offering a uh, small blue. I'll just bring you back here again to the blue session and we'll start with cobalt turquoise what can I say about this color that has not been said it's just so bright and he also has great potential for mixing I had done many mixes as tests and it's a granulating color so whatever you mix with it you get the granulation of turquoise coming through so it can have very very unique effects on mixes and even though I love this color I think I may save it for a summer palette because this screams summer to me <laughs> the color of the bottom of pools in my head that's what I associated with now we have marine from Holbein with PB16 it's such a lovely color it's the perfect teal and teal turquoise are my favorite colors Teal, turquoise, and um, yellow greens, like bright yellow greens, are just my favorite. Together with um, muted or um, warmer oranges, I love it. Now we have cerulean blue from Winsor Newton. This is a color that I rarely reach out for that's why I thought of including it in this palette because I know it can be great in mixes and it can also be great for spring skies I think it reminds me of uh, this um, bright spring days this and um, manganese blue as well can also use it for water but I have a feeling I will like the manganese blue more it looks a tad brighter yeah I wonder if this is Taylor as well, because usually if Taylor has um, the column, this is just PB15. I'll have to check out uh, the official name of this pigment when I'm editing. I'm gonna edit here. This is a bit more leaning towards green, this is a, a bit more uh, leaning towards red. Now we have the Cerulean Blue Chromium from Daniel Smith, which is 36, PB36. It's also a red leaning uh, blue, similar to Winsor Newton Cerulean Blue. I think I like this one better. It's a bit more purplish. Did I say leaning towards blue? I meant red. <laughs> leaning towards red. So yeah, this is a bit more purplish, it seems. 
now I have manganese blue hue from Daniel Smith I hope I'm not uh, mumbling too much I get so excited um, swatching colors with which I have I have bought a long time ago and somehow I didn't use much and it's like I'm rediscovering them and this is a gorgeous manganese blue hue I really love it sometimes you are so focused on buying new stuff but um, although I I don't think I'm ready to commit to a no buy year I decided this year to kind of go through my stuff and rediscover what I have and that's also part of this effort here to make this palette I haven't gone out and buy anything to include in this palette this is all things I already had that I bought like I mentioned a while ago and I, I just want to rediscover them and experiment and, and use them now uh, Ultramarine Finest from Schmincke it's a very beautiful ultramarine Elio Cerulean which is a phthalo blue green shade very similar to the manganese blue hue from Daniel Smith these are very powerful colors the phthalo it's good if you want to work with layers because they stain so you don't risk disturbing the layer underneath now we have Sanirio's blue from Sennelier which should be more opaque because it has white in the formulation it's a nice blue as well very spring blue I would say diluted many of them have similar tones now we have cobalt blue uh, number two by mission gold it's very beautiful love cobalt all sorts of cobalts blues greens this is really really nice and the last one of the bunch is Phthalo Sapphire by Schmincke which is cobalt blue um, sorry Phthalo blue red shade it's a very gorgeous blue and you see that my swatches got quite big now So let me zoom out a bit. Here we have the second page of swatching. They're all still wet. Uh, some greens got a bit drier, but um, most of the paints are still wet. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to share with you still today the dry swatches, but not to worry about it. I can always film uh, on a later day the results so it, I'll have also time to go through them and have a thought about which I want to include in the palette and then we'll see this coming up so it's another day actually a few days later I left this to fully dry and I'm still 
very unsure of where I'm going with this palette now because I love greens and there's so many here that I like and then I would like to use for the palette and I have only <laughs> so many spots left and as it stands I wouldn't have space for anything else so I'll have to take some <laughs> tough decisions but as it stands now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my choices regarding these uh, swatches over here and then ideally in the last part of this series that uh, who knows <laughs> it will be a four or five series or a four part series or a five part series we'll see when I am over with and then um, hopefully I'll get to some place where I can compromise and be happy about my choices but yeah so I have here a lot of bright light greens because I don't know spring brings them, brings me uh, this sense of new growth and you know new shoots so that's the color that pops to mind immediately and I have a few here that could be considered for this category so we have serpentine genuine green gold um, and by Daniel Smith and then May Green by Schminka, Bright Green Lake by Michael Harding and Bright Yellow Green by Senelier. So as much as I like all of these I think I immediately thought I wouldn't include the May Green for this because I felt that compared to the other ones it's more artificial looking. I like a, a bit mid I like the other tones a little bit better. I find them a bit um, warmer and more natural. So this would be um, my preferred color choices. Of course, I cannot take all of them with me. <laughs> and I really, really love green gold. It's a favorite of mine. So. I really want to be able to put this in the palette as I showed you when I was swatching mine has been become very hardened I'm thinking of ordering a new tube just because I love this color independent of this palette or not I love this color and of course I will keep using the one I have dried up I really like also the bright green by Michael Harding it's very luminous because it has the PY uh, 150, same as the green gold from Daniel Smith. It's um, Nico Azul Yellow. This is slightly more like acid looking, but uh, yeah, if I could, <laughs> I would like to include both of these. I know it may be not, not necessary, but I re really love these colors. I love the bright yellow by Senelier as well, but I feel that the diluted version of Michael Harding uh, could maybe cover similar tone, maybe consider a bigger palette if I cannot uh, make these tough decisions, but yeah, so far I really want to include the green gold, the bright green, and what else? I like the green appetite. I didn't really connect uh, with the color specifically for this palette but I really like this color by Michael Harding as well it's called moss green and I felt that it had a nice um, kind of uh, lynching color and I don't know if that's how you pronounce it and never understood how to pronounce this word but on my walks around the woods here in Ireland or the Botanic Garden often I would see in um, branches this um, lynchen or um, also the moss around the trees and I thought that this does remind me of that and I, I could see this being used in a spring uh, color palette so that's that's where I am at um, regarding this first row of greens here now regarding the other ones at the bottom I'm not a big fan of um, colder greens for 
this selection in particular nothing came to mind but um, I thought that maybe including the viridian from Winsor and Newton would be a good choice considering it's a granulating color and it has beautiful mixes like I mentioned with um, pinks definitely I think this would be more of a mixing color for me but I think it's a useful one to have and I don't know it's strange but um, this color here by Sennelier the green earth it's never been a color that I used much or caught my eye, but I saw myself now um, as I was swatching and I was thinking that maybe uh, it could be useful in this palette for spring. I would like to, to experiment using it a bit more, so um, I may include this color as well. I know I'm... Um, rumbling a lot so <laughs> i'll try to get through this uh, last row here uh, so i can close this chapter of the selection uh, in theory so uh, from this uh, like i said i love cobalt turquoise i have it on my cisk palette and i may include it on a future summer palette because i think it would look nice with the neons and have some other plans for the future so I wouldn't be including it here but I like the idea of including this marine color here again I'm a very um, visual person there are some things that um, bring me images to my mind or colors or uh, specific things and this marine kind of um, made me think of some visits I did to some botanic gardens and there were these um, indoor like um, greenhouses and fountains and uh, lily pads and stuff like that and this color kind of remind me a bit of that of the water so I thought it would look also great used together with uh, these greens here it's a combination that I really love and I think it's fresh and kind of translates well this uh, spring um, idea of uh, new and fresh and you know so I really want to include this color it's a very very beautiful color it's a PB16 um, which is Taylor turquoise and I, yeah, it's a really lovely um, from this type of blues they are all very similar I mean the cerulean blue um, is the same pigment from Winsor & Newton and um, Daniel Smith and then I have manganese blue hue both uh, from Winsor & Newton and Daniel Smith so I felt that I could get away possibly with choosing one of them and Right away, my favorite of all was this manganese hue here by Daniel Smith. I love, I like a lot the tone. This kind of reminds me of this bright blue skies when you start having the feeling that winter is finally <laughs> finishing and you have longer uh, sunny days and bright blue skies. So that for me translates it very well. Uh, I like also the Cerulean Blue Chromium by Daniel Smith so um, if I had to choose one of those I would definitely get the manganese uh, blue hue but we'll see if I get to have a bigger palette or um, we'll see I may include this one as well and then um, over here I had some difficulty choosing between this three tones that are more or less um, can be a slightly similar and they are darker blues um, I didn't consider these two because I thought they were kind of also close enough to these the seniors blue from Sennelier has white on it so um, I'd rather go with something transparent 
And because this manganese blue hue is already a phthalo, I didn't see why I should also add another phthalo, um, which uh, is the case here for the Helio Cerulean um, by Schmincke. Now, I really like the Cobot and I love the Ultramarine Finance by Schmincke and the Phthalo Sapphire by Schmincke also. This is a very beautiful um, phthalo blue red shade and I spend, <laughs> I spend a, a long time looking and staring at these three colors over here and trying to understand what I would prefer and to be honest I think I've changed my mind since because when I was looking at it a few days ago I ended up um, thinking that I wanted to have the ultramarine because of the granulation and the beautiful color as well but I really like this phthalo blue and I think that the fact that this is staining can be a good thing also to paint flowers and I can see here diluted it has some beautiful color um, I had some beautiful cauliflower effects I don't know I I'm seeing myself getting more and more um, attracted to this tone now so we'll see as it stands I already have 16 colors and that original plastic palette that I showed in my first video has 16 wells and I still have some earth tones to go through so I have to go through this exercise till the end and then uh, make some decisions. I have an extra empty palette that is uh, bigger so I may change the palette if I want to include more colors or I will reduce more my color selection. All of that will be coming on the next chapter of the series and I hope you've been enjoying it so far. If you did please remember to give me that thumbs up leave your comment uh, i love reading your comments and i'll see you soon bye